Hello everyone. I asked the Lord to to put upon my heart if if need be in regards to my personal testimony. I know I have a video on here that's that's dated back I believe last year, but I just felt as though like you know it was it was created prematurely and I should have given even more in depth like regarding my past and my life because the word of God says that that if the son sets you free you are free indeed and only by the power of the Holy Spirit that has raised Christ from the dead can truly set an individual who is bound and a slave to sin he is the only one who can destroy the bonds and truly set that person free so me as some people have have lived when they was younger me I was raised up in a Baptist church my mom would always take me to church and you know I was just you know as any other church goer who isn't truly born again you know you go to church on one day and the rest of your your week is like hell itself. I never knew the Lord. I never, I never, I never truly understood the word of God. When I would go to church and people would say amen and hallelujah and praise the Lord. Most of the time I was asleep. Most of the time I was worried about me going home and just doing what I wanted to do. So as I grew up, as I grew up and I got older, you know, me still being young and, you know, um, you know, seeking life and, you know, trying to find who I was, you know, that the enemy came towards me with the spirit of sodomy. And the way that he came to me with this spirit was a simple fact of that my mother, she had a friend whose son obviously was perverted and or tempted by the sodomite spirit and when i speak of sodomite i mean you know the term that is used in the generation homosexual homosexuality and through me hanging with this individual he would he would do certain things to me you know all, you know always touching my private area and we would engage in you know, um, sexual acts that that is obviously an ab an abomination to the Lord Himself. But at, at you know, as we did these things, you know, me just being a young child, you know, I didn't know, I didn't, you know, I didn't have no understanding. I just thought that this was, you know, like the way of life. Even though when those acts were upon me, you know, it felt weird. It didn't feel like this was my true nature. Did, as if they didn't feel as though me as a man, I shouldn't be doing this along with another man. But, you know, despite all those warnings that was, you know, going off in my soul, you know, I just continued to negate them. I continued to just kind of push them away. And, you know, I, I was just seeking after the pleasure that was given forth through me doing these sexual perverted acts. So as I grew up, you know, in, uh, you know, high school and middle school and things of that nature, as the Bible speaks about, the Bible speaks about how, you know, if a spirit is attached to you, you know, you, I mean, you know, you know, as once a spirit is attached to you and, you know, um, people in the church know this, as a, as a spirit is attached to you, you know, even from your youth, it will always be with you until Jesus Christ delivers you. So me being young, there was a, a time period, a time span when I didn't engage in sodomite acts as I did when I was young. But when I, when I was in high school and, you know, college and things of that nature, that's, that's when that spirit started to arise again. And meanwhile, you know, me, you know, like me growing up from elementary, middle school, 
in high school, you know, I was always picked on. I was always, I was always the kid that, you know, never really had true friends. I never was, you know, accepted by society. You know, I never was the guy that, you know, that like women, you know, wanted to talk to or date, anything like that. You know, like the truth be told, I believe the first time I even had a quote unquote girlfriend was when I was in 12th grade in high school. And, you know, even that was in itself, you know, just, you know, it was just foolishness, you know. So, you know, me growing up being picked on and me coming from a home where, you know, I never had a father, you know, you know, yes, I had, you know, pictures of my father and things of that nature. I never remember any part in my life where I truly had that relationship with my father. It, it never was established, point blank, period. So, you know, coming from a home where, you know, single mom, broken family, I mean, broken home, actually. I mean, you know, like my mother, she was always there supporting me and helping me, things like that. So, but, you know, without that true foundation with, with a man in the home, you know, there to encourage and build the family and truly be led by the Lord, you know, it just wasn't there. So, you know, sin and perversion was always rampant in and out of my life. And, you know, being picked on is really something because, you know, to truly go through it yourself, you would you and you would never have that true understanding of how one individual truly feels about being bullied every single day. And yes, you know, I had quote unquote friends, but they really wasn't my friend. They were just trying to be there, you know, when nobody was around. But then when they got around their other friends, they would, you know, pick on me as well. So, you know, growing up with all those different type of spirits trying to put me down, try to try to make me, you know, you know, be up under this, you know, like depression, always hating myself when I look in the mirror, you know, that took effect in between times before I went to college. So you know, like in high school, you know, I was always that type of person, you know, kind of saving myself and things of that nature. But, you know, like to move on forward to like when I went to college, you know, I was always that type where, you know, I never really was able to interact with people personally. Um, I was a type where, you know, I would, you know, be on the computer all the time, watch porn, masturbate all the time. And it just, it just continued to escalate as I went from freshman, sophomore, junior, and a senior. And I can remember at times, you know, I could see the perversion changing, shape-shifting from me looking at regular porn, heterosexual man and a woman to the, to the point where, you know, I, you know, I would look at just perverse things such as, you know, People role playing with like, you know, like Catholic women, you know, like dressing up, having sex with the priests and things of that nature. And then even took a step further to the point of that spirit that was attached to me when I was young progressed and was fulfilled with me looking at transgender porn. If, you know, those out there who don't know what transgender means, that is when a man a full-blown man who was born a man is full with lust and perversion and tempted and perverted in the spirit to go to the length of changing the outward appearance because inside, inwardly, the sin of sodomy has consumed them to the point that they feel as though they should do something on the outside to fulfill how they feel on the inside. And I want everybody to truly understand that that is a spirit from Satan himself. That is a demonic entity that has tainted that individual to believe that they are truly a woman inside if they are a man and a woman who is truly a woman feel inside that they are a man. And, you know, like just like a person, you know, acting as a man or a woman when they're really a woman and a man. It's just their sin being fulfilled in the flesh. That's all it is. And so um, as I was watching this transgender porn and, 
you know, like having these lusts and these fantasies about, you know, me being with a man, but me, me being with a man who looked like a woman on the outside with just my lust, my flesh desiring that. And that's what I truly was feeding on. You know, I would, you know, I would be the typical down low brother that, you know, that the world always loved to, you know, like classify as, you know, I would have been those type, I would have been one of those type of guys. But, you know, as it, it, you know, as it continued with, you know, with me watching porn and, and, and you know, masturbating, like just as if it was a nine to five job, you know, that lust and that perversion will always seep through with me, you know, going on these websites where, you know, you can just hook up with anybody in like five minutes, you know, just post a picture of your body, you know, take pictures of your private parts and put it on there and someone will, will, you know, like message you or add you in five minutes and then you just meet this person. You know, I was that type of individual and I went to the length of, you know, being on these websites, communicating through like the social medias and things of that nature to meet these transgender individuals. And to the point where, you know, I will meet them and, you know, and, you know, have intercourse with them, you know, either going over their house or, you know, you know, like paying money to get a hotel, you know, like doing that secret type of thing, you know? And, um, and, you know, I could always remember the simple fact that, you know, deep down inside, I could feel like this is wrong, but I still wanted to do it to enjoy that moment, to enjoy the pleasures of my own desires. And, you know, it, you know, and it, and it stayed to that point where, you know, I was doing that on the side, not so much as me, you know, just having intercourse with women, but at the same time, it, you know, I could see that that was trying to take place in my life. And, you know, along with that, you know, me being in college and, you know, you know, like away from home, you know, I started, you know, I just started smoking marijuana all the time. You know, I started engaging in that as well, smoking marijuana, you know, you know, um, buying, you know, buying weed from different states, even though the simple fact that I could have got caught and, you know, expelled from school possibly. And, you know, just always living a life, clubbing, going out, drinking, partying, um, had a, you know, just had a terrible attitude, you know, cursing all the time. Um, you know, like just caring about how, you know, I looked on the outside and, you know, just like back to the whole marijuana thing, it, it, you know, it got to the point where, you know, I was just, I, I always wanted to be high to the point where that, if I wasn't high, I, you know, I just felt abnormal and, you know, I would always, you know, smoke in the morning when I, like right before I had class and smoke as soon as I got out of class, masturbate and do all of those things when, you know, inside I was missing something. And I remember it was last year, it was last year, um, at the beginning, you know, like probably like around March, March 2012, that is when, that is when, by the grace of God, in my ignorance, I began to seek the Lord because a person who was not born again, they have no business seeking God. An unbeliever, a person who's truly living in the world, they have no business just desiring the things of the Lord because the Bible specifically says that, you know, the mind and the heart and, and everything of the, un, of, uh, of the carnal man is enmity with God. And in Jeremiah, it speaks about how, you know, who can know the heart of man? You know, it's, it is, it is desperately wicked. So I praise God because at the end of my senior year, that is when he started pulling me. That is when God, the father began to draw me to his son, Jesus Christ. That is when I began asking the Lord questions about this life because I was looking at this life like, man, I don't want to be in this world. This world is wicked. Show me the, tr show me the truth of this world. How is this world? I don't want to be in this world 
because I could kind of sense that, you know, I just didn't want to go with the whole flow of, you know, like the American dream because I felt like something in me was missing. I felt like, why do I do these things? All these questions started pondering in me. Why do I do these things? I used to ask, you know, like some of my friends questions about life and stuff, and they will always say, I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, in that of itself, you know, I believe like that was the Lord drawing me to come to him and speak to him. And the one thing that, you know, I praise the Lord for is that my mother, even through me not knowing the Lord, she would always say, read Psalms 23, read Psalms 23. Always, you know, she gave me a Bible. I never opened it. I just, you know, like she gave me her handkerchief because, you know, I just love like the smell of, you know, how, how her handkerchief smell, you know, like just me being close to my mom's like that, you know, and, and, and you know, I, you know, I put the handkerchief right where Psalm 23 was and I could recite Psalm 23. And, but I remember one night when I laid down to sleep because I don't even remember, I, I didn't even remember the last time I even prayed, but I remember me trying to say forth the whole Psalm 23 and I remember that I couldn't even recite it, you know, um, in that moment, something moved within me to be like, something's wrong for me not to just be able to I remember the words that my mother gave me. And I couldn't remember, I mean, through the Bible that my mother told me to read that I couldn't remember anymore. So that is when the Lord began to, you know, move within me. And, you know, to, you know, like long story short of how like the Lord came to me and he truly was drawn forth to me through different signs that he was showing me him opening up my my understanding of my eyes to know that that was him even though i was in complete rebellion and me not born of the spirit he allowed for me to see that in different situations when he was drawing me that it was him and that it wasn't just in my mind it wasn't just in my head that this was truly him pulling me towards him to repent of my sins and to turn away from my sins and to truly be born of the spirit and to truly follow him. And I remember that through all that last year, before I graduated, I remember that after, after I had graduated, I remember specifically being in my mother's living room where I had my computer open, you know, I was ready to, you know, go on, the websites, Craigslist, Black Planet, all of them. I know y'all know what it, you know, I know y'all know what the websites are. You know, Mocha Space Now, you know. And, and you know, I was fully ready to engage in, a simple, in, in the same the same things that I was doing. You know, I was, I was ready to call somebody up so I can get some weed and smoke in, you know, watch porn or meet some women that I knew in my past and just you know just do the same things but i remember that as i sat there as i had my laptop open i remember that something in me was like i don't want to do this anymore something in me was like i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to do these things anymore and i kind of felt like this sense of help within me like you know I just I just was to that point like I don't want to do this anymore I didn't want to I didn't want to live what the world had to offer I didn't want to be lost in this world and just be another individual who lived then died and they're off in hell somewhere but I remember that I opened my mouth and I asked the Lord, I asked Jesus, I said, I said, Lord, if you take the desire of me smoking marijuana away from me, 
and the things that I have been doing that that I would not want to do them anymore. In the sense that I was asking the Lord to in a sense be his even though I didn't understand the words that was coming out of my mouth but he understood completely because he looks upon the heart and it wasn't no sinner's prayer the sinner's prayer can't save you it's your heart that outflows your heart if you truly desire to repent and turn away from sin and follow Christ, then the words that come forth out of your heart and out of your lips is true, truly repentance. And I remember that as soon as I said that, no special prayer, no on my knees or religious and all those things, I, I remember the simple fact of, I remember the simple fact that I could feel in the spirit that all my addictions and all those things are, they, they was removed from me. They was truly removed from me. I, I, I really, I really felt set free. I really truly felt set free. And once I got up from the couch, I walked around. And I was like, "Man, this is it. I'm, you know, I'm set free from the things that had me bound, which was sin." So I pray that those who are watching this, those who are backslidden, those who scorn Christ, those who mock Christ those who make a fun of Christ, those who don't know the Lord, those who are lost, those who truly desire to be set free and just have their hands clean of their sin and, their, and, and the wickedness of this world. I pray that right now that you would actually truly cut this video off and just ask the Lord where you at. You don't have to get on your knees and, you know, be all you know, quote unquote, formal about things. The Lord wants your heart. He wants your broken spirit. He wants your heart that is broken down and needs to be delivered. And only he is the one who can do it. Only Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can set you free and transform your life and create you anew within you. See, it starts from the inside. People that truly, you know, fornicate and, you know, they're murderers and, you know, you know, like they're in this rebellion and, you know, you know, living a sodomite lifestyle. That is just, that is just the end result because it begins on the inside. You know, all of us have, have this sin nature that needs to be broken with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So I pray that you would truly, truly seek the Lord. Stop playing games. St stop thinking that you're all right. Stop saying, oh, only God can judge me. Stop having these excuses. Just stop Just and just own up to you being a sinner. And only by the grace through faith are you saved. Salvation that you can't work for salvation. You can't do you can't do penance. You can't you can't you can't just you know do all these religious works to earn salvation. Jesus Christ already paid it all on the cross. For when he was on the cross, he said, It is finished, it is accomplished, it is done. Salvation is a gift of God. And that gift starts with godly sorrow through repentance. Only the, only the power of the Holy Spirit can convict you of your sins 
to truly seek God. And once that occurs, you will cry out to the Lord with a and with a cry of of just total humility of who you are and what you are. Because all of us have broken God's laws and his commandments. So I pray that I pray that you are encouraged. I pray that this video is full of grace and full of truth. I pray that those who are backslidden, I pray that this convicts you in love. I don't want for you to be beaten down and feel condemned and things of that nature because the Lord didn't come for that. He didn't come to condemn. He came to seek and save the lost. For God so loved the word that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believe in the only begotten Son of God for no flesh shall be justified by the law in the sight of the Almighty God. But only through you truly receiving the gift of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ can you truly be born of the Spirit. The flesh is of flesh and the Spirit is of the Spirit. You must be born again in order to even see the kingdom of God. And through this new birth, and you shall be renewed. You should be a new creation. Yes, people will see the outside you, but inside the Lord has created a new, complete, perfected spirit by the power of his blood, by the power of, of his life, the power of his death, and the power of him being resurrected from the dead on the third day. I pray that you believe in your heart, that you repent and turn away from sin, for we are truly living in the last days. These are the final days. Just look at what's going on in the world. Look at all the signs and wonders that's going around in the, in the heavens and on earth. And look what's going on in Israel right now. When it, right now that they're talking about peace and safety and about this treaty and it coming forth. Please be not deceived. Be not deceived by the cares of this world and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Be not deceived. For the Lord wants everyone to repent and come unto him. For he is the only one who can save you from your sin and hell. I pray that you be blessed on this day. I pray that your week be blessed. And I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you shall come and repent of your sins for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that the Lord Jesus Christ truly loves you for that's the reason why he died. I pray that you will continue in your walk if you are a believer. And I pray that that through my testimony that people can truly see that Jesus Christ is the one who can truly save them. I pray. You are Church, shine as your bright.